Okay, good morning, guys. Um, we're going to talk about soponification today. I'm showing you the finished product. Here are some soaps that I made in the classroom. Uh, you can really turn out a professional looking product. And what your soap looks like is going to depend on what kind of mold you use. This is a favorite of mine. It just um, is a regular loaf mold and it just comes out. So once you flip it out, you just cut it into squares. I don't care for anything real fancy. However, there's molds for anything you want to do. These molds right here are flowers. And as you've noticed right down here, you can actually get into adding color. So you've got a, a white flower with yellow on it. And these are a good mold from that, for that. These are silicone molds. You can get them at Amazon um, for not much money, maybe 11 or $12. And you can do some really good work with them. Um, I got started doing this um, at the first of the pandemic. Just boredom drove me to it. I would still come to the classroom in order to take care of the plants. And so um, sort of living the simple life has always appealed to me. And um, I studied saponification, which is um, the mixing of sodium hydroxide with water. Um, and oil. Anytime you mix sodium hydroxide with an oil, it saponifies. That means it makes soap. Soap makers use all kind of oils, um, olive oil, palm oil, coconut oil, um, and I've got several of those. Even lard makes a good soap. Um, so you need a soap, you need water, and of course the sodium hydroxide. We're going to do a real simple recipe today just to show you the basics of this. And um, we'll turn out a simple soap that really is good to have around the house. Um, the worst part of making soap to me is having to wait on it. You get your recipe done and you pour it in the mold and then you take it out and then you've got to wait like two or three or four, sometimes six weeks it's according to the recipe. But just to give you an idea of some of the things that can go into a um, soap recipe, um, you've always got your sodium hydroxide, which is highly caustic. You must be very, very careful with this. You need to wear protective material, um, goggles. You need to wear gloves. I would not recommend this for my students alone. There needs to be adult supervision when you're doing this. Um, other things that you need to have, the very basics, you need to have a pair of scales. Again, this came from Amazon. You can probably get it at Walmart. But this is a just simple $11 or $12 scale that um, will measure weight in ounces because we're going to deal with ounces. You need a good glass or metal bowl that you can put your oil in. You need another container that you can put distilled water in, and then finally, your sodium hydroxide. So you need at least three containers. You need the, um, a way to measure your products. And this is a very invaluable tool right here. This is a, um, a hand mixer. And it's not absolutely necessary, but it does a really good job to mix the oils and the sodium hydroxide in order that it uh, will saponify. Sodium hydroxide, again, is high, highly caustic. Um, usually we refer to it just as lye. Uh, lye is something that you do not keep um, laying around. In fact, when you make soap, you don't need to have any pets or children around. Um, you need to be where you can totally concentrate and keep your mind on things. So I'll sit that over here out of the way and um, show you some other things that you can use in soap making. Um, goat's milk is real popular. Uh, that is a good emollient for the skin. Uh, you use that mostly in like a bath bar. Um, it makes the skin soft and subtle um, and the olive oil will do the same thing. Um, so goat's milk is an option. 
You can actually use oatmeal, ground oatmeal is best, and all kind of other um, things that you can put in there. But again, we're gonna keep it simple this morning. This is the way you buy color. Um, it is just a powder. This is matte yellow, and it will turn your finished product into a nice yellow soap. I haven't exactly decided which way we'll color this soap yet, but um, it's gonna get warm in here. So I'm gonna take a minute to adjust this thermostat. Um, okay. So, your hydro hydrogen um, sodium chloride, um, your stand mixer, your bowls, your distilled water, and your oil. Um, another thing that I consider essential is distilled vinegar. Vinegar will stop the action of this uh, lye. If it were to get on your skin, which sometimes it does. Um, uh, the only time that it's affected me is when I'm washing pans out um, and there's just a little trace of it still in there and it will really dry your hand out and you can feel it stinging. So all you gotta do is put some vinegar on there and it will stop that. Okay, so that pretty much uh, covers everything that you need to get started. Again, we're gonna do a very basic um, recipe. I don't know that I mentioned um, the essential oils that you can use to um, use as fragrance in your soaps. You got lavender, you got vanilla, you got lemongrass, you've got lemon, uh, just anything you want to do there. Here's another color that is a mica powder that's actually red that I've used the most of. But you just put a little essential oil in there at the right time and it will turn out real, real good. Okay, so to get started, the first thing you do is you go to your scales and you wanna get it on ounces. Okay, you get it on ounces and you put your container on there. And of course, the way you use a set of scales is once your container is weighed, you hit the tear button and it will take it back to zero. So that means you're gonna be weighing whatever you pour into that container. All right, we're gonna use olive oil today. Extra virgin olive oil. This is a really good oil to use in soap. Um, sometimes it takes it longer to cure. However, it's really good for the skin. Okay, the recipe says you need 50 ounces. So we have got to watch our scale until it gets to 50 ounces. And you can tell that that's gonna take the majority or not, if, or if not all of this bottle right here. We're at 39, 40, let's see, we're at 35, This really needs to be exact. Okay, I'm at 40.53. Therefore, I need to come out with just a tiny bit. We gotta get it back to 40 even. Okay, that's 40.11, so I'm gonna say it pays to really go by the recipe and get it right. And this is sort of meticulous. I'm not a real patient guy, so this isn't my favorite part. But it's still got just a tiny bit too much in there. Okay, it's at 39.86. So we'll just dribble just a little bit in there Okay, we're at 39.93. Okay, we're at 30, we're exactly at 40. Okay, it's wavering just a little bit between 
9.96, and I see 40. So we're going to go with that. Okay. See how pretty that olive oil is? It's a really pretty color. Uh, you touch it on your skin. It's really soft. I'll set that aside, um, and we'll use that in the batch later. So we've got 40 ounces of oil. So we'll set that aside, and we'll start all over with our measurement. Let's see. We'll get that back to zero. And again, you take it to ounces, and we're going to use this container um, for our water. We will tear the weight back to zero. It takes 15 ounces of water. And again, you've got to be exact. So we're going to pour that in there very carefully. Eight ounces, nine ounces, 10 ounces, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we're getting really close. All right, we're at 14.92, 14.96. That's a drop. Look, we're at 14.99. That's really, really close. Okay, so we're a tiny bit over on the water. So again, I'm going to just take a dab out. A dab, that's not a real professional terminology or term, but we do want this exact. A spoon would be ideal. I'm having my classroom cleaned and Everything's not as handy as it should be. Okay, that's at 14.99. Okay, I'm putting just a tiny bit of water on my finger. So that jumps into 15. Well, now a little bit too much. Okay, back to 14.99, that's gonna do it for today. Okay, that's your distilled water. Okay, again, we're gonna go back to zero. We're going to look for the unit of ounces. And we're gonna get a clean container. Pretty much follow the same instructions. We'll get this to tear, which takes it back to zero, which means that this is going to accurately weigh whatever we put in there. And what we're going to put in there now is your lie. Okay, this is the dangerous part. So we're going to make sure that um, we've got on our goggles. So I've got my goggles on, and you should have on gloves. However, I'm not going to do gloves right now because I think I've got everything under good control. But we're looking for 6.4 ounces of lye. So again, this is your dangerous part of it. You don't you don't want any spills. Six ounces. Okay. We're looking for 6.3 ounces of lye. Okay, we're getting very close. So we're at 5.78. Nine six. Okay, we're at six point oh seven. So I'm going to dab this in there until I can get out as much as I need to. Okay, six point oh three. That's it exactly. Okay, always you should have your gloves on. So I'm not setting the best example right now, but put your lie away. And again, this is no time for children or pets. 
I've got my classroom closed off. This, the classroom cat is um, not able to come in here. Um, there's nobody else um, here right now. So I'm going to turn off my scale because we're through with that. Again, this comes from Walmart or Amazon for about 11 or $12. And um, there's some more finished product right there. Those are really good looking soaps. They're really good for your skin. That's got olive oil and um, goat's milk in it. I don't think I mentioned either, we're gonna be working with some temperatures and um, what you need is a like a meat thermometer or a candy thermometer or I've invested in this automatic um, gun that takes care of taking a temperature reading. Okay, so the first thing you do is very slowly, always pour your lye solution into the water. Don't do it the other way around. And what you've got to do is get it totally diluted. Now I'm telling you guys, this is dangerous stuff. Um, any kind of little spill can really cause a little problem. This is actually, <coughs> it's making me cough. This is actually poisonous to the skin. I took a little whiff of it. <coughs> it's bothering me. You remember that was 6.3 ounces, so we need to get all of that out and make sure that gets in there. And again, I told you that you always put the lye into the water, not the other way around. The reason you do that is because you don't want to splash it. We need some wind or some air circulating in this room so I'm gonna prop my door open. Those fumes, remember, those fumes are dangerous. Okay. So, you've got your lye in your water mixing. And you can actually put your hand right here and feel the heat of it. This is really, really hot. In fact, I will take the temperature in a minute and show you. Um, if a child were to drink this, it, it would be it would be terrible. If you got it on your skin, it would be terrible. Um, okay, look at that. That liquid mixture has gone to 185 degrees. Um, that's like a hot oven. But that is what happens when you mix lye with water. And lye is a caustic substance. It's it's dangerous. However. When you mix that lye with an oil, it saponifies. So that means that it um, is no longer dangerous. That, that takes away the acidity of it. Okay, so I'm gonna stir that real good. I'm gonna make sure none sloshes out. I'm gonna make sure that all of it is dissolved in there. And again, that's got fumes, so I'm standing back. Best idea is to wear something like this and you wouldn't have a problem. Also, I see some little floaters in there of some kind. I'm gonna try to get those out. You don't want any imperfections in your soap, but you stir, stir, stir until you see that that is very well blended. And then, this is one of the downsides uh, to making soap. It's definitely a waiting game. Um, we have got to wait until that soap. Okay, right now it's reading at 170. We've got to wait until that gets down to 110. Um, the gun is, is new, and so I don't trust it quite as much. 
I'm going to use this thermometer and it's reading gosh 190 degrees um, I'm gonna trust that all right so this is where the waiting game comes in that's at 190 degrees you know extremely dangerous I'm gonna set it under this shelf right here and basically what we got to do is wait until that gets to 110 degrees so um, I'm not a patient person, but that's that's one of the things you got to do is you got to wait You got to wait until these temperatures get right. This oil would be like a room temperature. It's probably 75 degrees and We will wait until that gets um, Around 110 and then we'll mix them together and when we mix them together That's when the cool process sort of starts. I think you'll enjoy that but um, now it's time to pick up the tools you've used and the containers and go rinse them off real good. Make sure even these little granules right here that gets on your hand, that could cause a problem. So you need to keep that vinegar close by and you need to let these things soak and then wash out. Um, so there are your flavors, your goat's milk. We're going with a very simple recipe. Like I said this morning, we'll turn out soap like this. I might use some color um, or we might just leave it um, like it is, a plain white. Um, or maybe this one will be off white. We'll just have to see. Um, that's sort of the, one of the interesting things about soap making. You, you don't never know exactly how it will turn out unless you get really good with your colors and you can mix those well. Um, that is a really nice rose mold. Um, this is my favorite bar. It's just a rectangle. It's just very simple. But of course, uh, for the holidays, a lot of people like these right here. But what I'm going to do is just leave the oil sitting right here and the lye mixture here to cool. And I'll turn the camera off and come back in a little while when it's down to 110 degrees and we'll pick it back up at that point. And like I say, I think you'll enjoy that part because things really start happening fast and you have to get um, things sort of rolling along on a pattern to make sure everybody, everything turns out. Um, will you mess up sometimes with a um, batch of soap? Heck yeah. And um, it's you know usually not that expensive. It's according to how much you put in there. But um, you're going to mess up sometimes when you don't think, get things measured exactly right. But be very pre precise with it. One other thing that I think I'll mention to you is you've got the option to use a soap calculator. It's called Soap Calc. It's on the internet and you can um, actually go there if you want to develop your own recipe. If you've got some rosemary or some lavender or um, uh, any kind of colorful flowers that you would like to incorporate into a bar of soap or maybe um, you want to use a particular fragrance um, you you can develop your own recipe so you can use that soap calc i think it's at soapcalc.com and you can plug in the different things that you'll need that is the lye, the oil of whatever description you want to use, and the distilled water, and it'll tell you what your ratio should be of each one of those. Um, I'm not all about getting fancy, so I'm just, just, I just use tried and true recipes that other people have used, and gosh, that turns out as nice a bar of soap as you would want. But uh, golly, you can take recipes and make it look like it's cake or cupcakes or all kind of things but this is good enough for me so I just use standard recipes and of course I'd be willing to share those with anybody but with the understanding that you'd follow the directions about using proper equipment and follow following the directions uh, to make this soap because it can be dangerous an adult needs to be involved in this so I'll turn off the camera usually it takes about an hour for the lye mixture to come back down to temperature. So I'll see you in an hour. Hello, I'm Desi Hilton, your Sumter Middle FFA president. And today I will share with you 
what we do in agriculture. These here are our fundraisers. We make and sell our own local honey. We also make flower soaps and oatmeal bars. Mm -mm -mm, they smell good. If you need some, just call me or Mr. Bar. You know where we are. Thank you. It's been about an hour since we were in here together and I believe the water has gotten reduced down to 116 degrees. You see, 116 degrees. And I am using this as opposed to this one. Well, that one says 112. Um, but it just doesn't seem to be as accurate as this one. But it's down to 116. You, you need it to drop between 110 and 120. So it's pretty much where it needs to be. One way that you can cool that down is to very, very gently swish that lye mixture back and forth. And that will actually cool it down. Okay. So things are fixing to start happening pretty quick now. I'll put my goggles on. I reiterate, I should have my gloves on, but I don't. Um, so don't follow my example there. Um, so goggles are on. And I'm checking this lye solution to make sure that there is nothing that is not dissolved there so it is good and smooth much still hot to the touch but um, I think I'll check that one more time and make sure of where it's at because um, I've had to throw some batches out because I didn't get these temperatures close enough together but that's at 115 and that should work um, my rule of thumb is 115. If it'll get there, you'll be okay. Okay, so what you're about to do now is to actually begin the saponification process. You've got the lye mixed with the distilled water, and you've got three point no 6.3 ounces of that. Okay, here's your olive oil. I'll pull that closer to the light. You see that really nice color very nice um, smooth consistency so as I pour that in very slowly I will stir that and as I say the saponification process actually starts right now you'll see that oil changing That actually creates a chemical reaction where the lye is no more. It is now saponified, or will be in just a minute. But you see the reaction, and that it changes colors and consistency. Uh, some of my students that were helping me at the farmer's market not long ago, they wanted a red bar of soap, so I've measured out uh, some red color and uh, I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm going to just use red uh, Coloration in this and I think I'll keep it simple and go with lemongrass If you decide to make this soap as a hobby or for your friends um, I've learned as I've gone at the farmers market. There's plenty of people that want an unscented soap uncolored soap and so I've actually had to go back and do that to fill those requests. But um, you can actually feel as you drag the spatula through this, the consistency is changing. And once you're sure that you've got that mixed pretty well, you go to the stand mixer. And with the stand mixer, you too want to stir just a little bit and then just do short burst like for 15 or 20 seconds and again you see a change in the consistency and the color 
of what you're working with. It just does a lot better job um, incorporating things than um, just a spatula. Okay, as you're working in this area, um, you should have your molds ready. Today I'm going to, just going to use a simple rectangle mold and um, I've got the flower molds here just as well to show you how both of those work. Uh, now make sure that as you pour these in, no hands allowed, you use that um, spatula to clean any extra soap out. You keep your soap mixture working. You let it rest after a good stir and then you use your stand mixture. Mix it up real good for 15 to 20 seconds. And again, you'll see it continue to blend better. Okay, just give that a mix, good mix and let it work. But you have your molds sitting here ready to go because there is a state of matter that it reaches and that, that state is called trace. Uh, trace is where um, the liquid does not fall back in with uh, the rest of it when you pick up the, the mixer. You see right now it, um, when you let it drip back in there, it just falls with no problem. Well, when it mixes trace, you got to move quickly and get it into your molds. Your molds should be ready, and also you should have um, little pieces of cardboard ready to go on top of the mold when you get your soap in there. And the purpose of that is to keep your heat in there. You want to keep it as hot as you can keep it um, for about 24 hours. And so. You definitely move quick to cover it up once it's mixed trace or meets trace. And uh, when you got that cardboard on top of your molds, you'll actually put a blanket or several towels over it, again, just to insulate it and hold that heat in there. But we're beginning to make some process or some progress with the process here. With different mixtures and according to the temperature in the room, um, that will determine how long this step will take. But I can see and feel that it's making progress uh, toward being saponified. Um, you can tell just a little bit of difference. Be careful to have your mixer down in the liquid so that none splashes out. It would be a good idea to have an apron on. Wear your gloves, wear your goggles. If I were to have my students help me with this, I would get it beyond the state of dealing with the lie because that is, that's just a, you can really get hurt by that. Okay, I see a little bit of difference in color and consistency. And when we get near trace, we're going to add that color in there and the fragrance because things really move fast at that point. It seems that people like things that are homemade. Uh, they like things with all natural ingredients. You definitely know what's in this soap, it's safe. Uh, like I say, the lye is saponified at this point. There's no more lye. And so it's a, it's a safe thing made up of only three ingredients. And um, I've learned a lot at the farmer's market uh, as, to far, as far as to what people like and would like to use. They like the different fragrances. They like the imperfections of what this soap will have. Um, they like the homemade aspect of it. What we're doing now is we're letting those temperatures of that hot lye mixture mixed with the oils. Of course, the water is already in there with the lye. 
this is a little bit slow to get ready here so I probably will adjust and cut out some of this mixing process um, like I say the time for this varies from batch to batch As far as where to get your soap supplies from, I got my basics from Amazon. However, if you if you want to do this on a bigger scale, there's many soap um, making outlets like Bulk, B U L K Apothecary, um, Nature Made Soaps. I think it is um, several of them that are out there that actually sell you the oils in larger containers. It's going to get pretty expensive to buy them at Walmart or on Amazon because they're smaller containers. But you can buy uh, the oils in 10-pound, 25-pound, or maybe a 5-gallon bucket if you get serious about it and really want to turn some out. You can buy in bulk and save some money. And just with a little practice, uh, you can turn out a really good product. you see it begins to get a little more creamy and when it actually um, gets to trace it happens really quick so you have to be very cognizant of how your mixture is working run the blender about 15 to 20 seconds and then mix and at mixing stage you can tell that you're making progress towards some saponification and your oil closer to temperature that that means they'll mix quicker maybe I should have dropped my lye a little bit more before I mix it in but that just means it'll take longer at this stage I can tell by feel and by appearance that's it's working but it's a little bit slow today And you see the different colors. Uh, you can buy all kind of blues. The, the colors are pretty expensive. Uh, that's a blue. You got lemon, fragrance, lavender, vanilla, lemongrass. And again, um, you can buy all of these from Amazon or the soap um, sources. Goat's milk soap uh, or goat's milk, you always use evaporated goat milk. So they say that if you use some from a goat herd, maybe you've got a goat herd locally, uh, you have to evaporate it first. Uh, I think it's a lot easier just to buy it in a can from Walmart. Uh, it costs a couple of dollars, I think. And it works really well. It gives a nice texture to your soap. Okay, slowly but surely we're getting there and again uh, this does require some patience and I'm not a patient person however uh, when it happens it'll happen pretty quick it's good to use your it's good to move your stick blender all around in the pan but just to make sure you don't slosh it problem with the lye make sure you've got that vinegar close by because that vinegar will stop 
the lie action um, like when you wash out this container and your little stirrer there if you were to get some remnants on your hands there all you got to do is put some vinegar on it and it will stop it and you'll be okay put the vinegar on it and then wash good with soap and water okay I'm getting a little bit of trace here stir and we'll let that react a minute um, there's all kind of molds you can get a good friend of mine bought these molds at um, Walmart uh, golly they were just like a quarter or something like that but you can make um, little um, these are pineapples I see flowers over here this um, mold here turns out a rose and uh, it's very delicate but it turns out a really pretty piece of soap so the sky's the limit as far as how you mold these okay you can tell this is much thicker now okay I see some slight trace you see you can see when you sling it around you can tell that it's not blending back into itself it's beginning to trace or get thickened and so that process is about complete I'm gonna take my color uh, like I say I had some students who were interested in red soap of all things and so I'm gonna ahead and mix that in as we're getting closer um, it's a good idea to mix color in in a smaller container and then put it in your bigger one it seems like that that mixes better but today we're just gonna pour it in the big batter and get it mixed up good and again you're putting that colorant in there it needs to be before it comes to a complete trace and you see it's getting closer because it is leaving those lines we're really really close so actually we got to move pretty fast at this point because it will actually set up in this container you just got to make sure that you've got all that color dispersed and mixed up nothing on the bottom uh, now would be the time to put some fragrance um, a couple of tablespoons I'm not going to measure exactly but that'll give you a good lemongrass um, scent to this and we'll make those students happy with some red soap okay that does smell really good okay you're very close to a full trace you see that um, sort of like a pudding consistency if you were to take pudding on a spoon and drop it back in over uh, your cup of pudding it wouldn't immediately fall down into it that is what trace is like we are essentially at trace right now I'm gonna mix it a little bit further I'm gonna be a little more daring what you do is once you get this poured into the molds you cover it up really good and you let it sit for 24 hours uh, sometimes you might have the desire to let it sit longer than 24 hours but you really need to go ahead and get it out of the mold and then leave it alone um, in a couple of days you will need to take a potato peeler or an exacto knife and sort of clean it up a little bit to make it look nicer okay I'm still gonna mix it just a little bit longer because I want it good and thick so that's gonna be some good red soap well, those students ought to be happy with that but if you were to color some of this like yellow 
Uh, that would be a good contrast to that red or white. Um, you can make some really neat looking soap. Sort of wish I'd done that. But we're going to have a complete red bar. Okay, that that's a good, good trace there, but I'm going to still run it just a little bit longer. Because if you get that trace just right, it's stiff to pour, but it's going to harden up real quick for you. Let's just make sure that that color is concentrated in there good. Okay, you see the swirls on the top. That's definitely a trace. But again, I'm going to continue to run it just a little bit to get it as firm as I can and it's still poor. Anytime you use the loaf pan, you don't have any trouble pouring it in there, but when you're working these smaller, like these flowers, it'll be a little bit more difficult. Okay, your trace, um, your drops on top of the soap is really easy to see now. So we'll consider that at trace. You're gonna need to wash everything that you work with really carefully. I see that original color there. I better get rid of that so I won't be discolored anyway. Okay. Anybody who wants red soap, you got it. Okay. All right. Gloves on. Eye covering on. So you just pour it into your mold. Usually I dip it out with a glass container rather than pouring uh, from the big container because it's usually easier to control. But I'm going to just do it this way today. Okay. So you make sure it's full. And then if you've got a spoon, you can actually use it to sort of even that out. But that's what you're looking for. Just make sure it gets to the top. And you see one's overfilled, I can rob from it and put it in the others. Okay, I'm pouring the rest of this in my loaf container. Usually you want to get all that out of there because every bit of that is soap. And if you let this stay in this pan a couple of days, you'll have a soapy mixture to deal with. Okay, I actually got uh, some of that on my hand um, and I should wash it off, but I don't feel anything stinging right now. So I'll leave that um, as it is. Okay. A spoon would be better, but basically you take this and you even out these little cups. You can take your spatula, jiggle it around and make sure that they're all full. Now that one needs a little bit more. You can be a little bit messy with it because you can actually just carve that away. Okay, that looks good. Okay, a lot of people put some design on the top of their soap. And again, a spoon is good to do that with, but I'll just use this spatula to put just a little design on there. Okay, one downside to a loaf pan, they do give on the sides. And so it's a good idea to always have something that you can sort of make it keep its right um, size, not let it bow out some. So I think that's pretty good. Um, again, homemade soap, um, I think part of the attraction is the fact that it's not perfect. It, it looks homemade. 
Okay, I'm quickly covering this with your cardboard that you've got prepared, and you can just actually use these over and over. Okay, I've got that done. You've got some old jackets here, blankets or towels are good, but you're just gonna cover that up and make sure that it's wrapped and insulated as best as possible and that will cure. Okay, that will be good uh, just like that. Uh, 24 hours you come back and it will be ready to pull out of the mold. And um, you just pull it out of the mold and you'll have a product that looks something like this. You'll need to use that exacto or potato peeler to just peel around the edges and clean it up. And um, gosh, it looks near professional. So that's all you can do with it at this point. And then a soap like this um, with this mixture, you should let it sit at least four weeks. You can actually use it quicker, uh, but it's gonna go away quicker. The longer you let it harden, um, the harder bar you're going to get. So I got a little cleanup to do, but that is the process. Uh, you just got to be really, really careful. Um, again, this is just a three ingredient soap. You've got your olive oil that you can pick up from Walmart. Uh, that's about $10. Your distilled water, that only costs a dollar. And then uh, your lye solution, which I bought this from a supply house your sodium hydroxide, that was about $40. But you can buy um, a package less than $20 on Amazon and, and do your first batch. Um, but it's been, you know, something good to do during the downtime. And uh, it's something good to teach the children about a chemical process and how something that we use every day um, is made very simply. Uh, back in the old days, um, they would make this out of potash and different things. Um, they were much more dependent on doing things themselves. So um, there's a lot of interest in this. People like the product. Um, so I'd encourage you, you know, if you want to give it a try, just be careful and um, get you a good recipe and follow it closely. You can make your own with a soap calc um, if you want to go that direction. But at this point, I will take this to the sink and I'll put some soapy water in it because if you get too much of this on your hands, there's still enough lye content um, that it will sting a little bit. So I will not wash it yet. I'll just put all this together and let it soak for a while and um, it'll be good to go uh, at that point. Um, I appreciate your attention and your interest in this. Uh, if you're one of my students, um, when I get you back in the classroom, uh, we'll, we'll try this uh, really neat uh, project. So thanks again. If I can ever help you anyway with um, your journey to soap making, I'll be glad to. Thanks so much.